All right, last video I'm pre-recording for the day. Uh, whenever I gotta do the week ofs, that means there's a lot more videos I gotta do. But gonna do this last video. Well, I also got the box office report. You know, you'll note I'm pre-recording this on Sunday. Uh, but beyond that, because uh, my voice is starting to get a little hoarse, but nothing serious yet. This one had a lot of requests, but I actually see it as still being a one shot. So coming to us from Zero Speed, Riley Edding, Gohan84, King Limits, uh, Zombie Rabbit. Did I get? Hope I got that right. Wade Wilson, TMXNI, and um, Amion Lewis 2.0. We have the question of what if Goku broke his limiter. Now, this is actually a question a lot of people brought up in response to what if Goku trained like Saitama? Because I took that very, I took particularly that, I took that what if on the literal side, what if he did that training? Uh, not what if he broke his limiter? Because that wasn't the question. Let's be very clear here. That wasn't the question. Honestly, if people trained like Saitama, yeah, it'd be a decent standard workout, but it really wouldn't do anything. The whole idea is that for some reason Saitama's limiter broke when he did that training. But it's not because of training, it's because that, well, it's because of the training, but if someone else did that training, they even pointed out in the series, that's just a regular workout. Um, so, what if Goku broke his limiter? Well, first and foremost, we have to kind of gauge how strong Goku would be. And to do that, let's gauge how strong Saitama allegedly is. Because, admittedly, he is a parody of super... He's not a gag character, but he is a parody of uh, superheroes. Uh, it's his whole shtick that he defeats everything in one punch, except for the strongest individuals. And even then, he still hasn't gone all out. The strongest feat we've seen from him is uh, things like blow, uh, sneezing and blowing the surface of Jupiter away. Or, literally, the big one where he threw a punch against Cosmic Garo, and they literally blew away solar systems. Mind you, that wasn't fully Saitama's power work, because Garo was also throwing part of that in there. At lowest, we can assume that it was about 50% of that attack. Still, 50% of that attack would still wipe out stars and solar systems. And possibly. Nothing wiped out a galaxy, not galaxy wiping out. But that's like multi-solar system uh, parts of the galactic kind of wiping out. And we know Saitama is still not as full power yet. We still don't really have a good grasp of how strong he really is yet. But we can assume we're talking in the upper cosmic area. He's probably not capable of straight out destroying the universe. I'm going to guess they're going to cap him below universal. But the ability to wipe out a galaxy at full power? I'm not going to say that's out of the realm of possibility. With just a punch. Now keep in mind though, even if he does somehow get to universal, that still doesn't make him stronger than Goku. Sorry guys, that doesn't. Uh, Goku, because his universe is more or less the same as ours, and the Dragon Ball universe is around 1,500 times larger than ours, and Goku, just by clashing with Beerus, was able to nearly destroy that universe, and the macrocosm... So, yeah, sorry, Goku just beats Saitama. Anyone who argues that, it, look, you might be saying, I'm being biased, but you have to be able to admit your own biases. You can't just... It's not, it's not one or the other here. There's bias on both sides. Regardless, Saiyans obviously are naturally stronger than humans. Now, people kind of sometimes get on my case for that, but because Saiyan biology allows them Zenkais and they have natural transformations, and you just look at the uh, Saiyans compared to the humans as the series goes on, yeah, sorry, Saiyans are naturally stronger and have more potential than humans. Sorry if that rubs you the wrong way. I don't quite get why... Look, I know we, we're invested in our fandoms, but the fact that it really gets under people's skins, I feel like you're... I think you're obsessing a little too much. Again, regardless. So, we to understand how strong Goku would be if he broke his limiter, we have to understand how strong Goku is now. Right now, technically speaking, the manga version of Goku is the strongest. He has a perfected Ultra Instinct, or at least a variation, his own variation of it. And we know that puts him on par with Ultra Ego Vegeta. Now, we know also that... Frieza Black is much stronger than either of them. But we know that Goku is already at the level to be wrecking shop with the universe and multiple universes at once. We know he's in the multiversal phase or peak of his power. Not peak, sorry. Multiversal point of his power. But even still, Beerus is still stronger than him. The problem with figuring out what a limit broken Goku is like is the fact that Saiyans constantly just go past their limits to get stronger. It's how their biology works. So, and 
we know there has to be a cap because Saitama himself even says he can't get any stronger. So he's hit up, he has plateaued at the moment, Saitama. Now that, and I think the, and I think they explained it best in Death Bell that the reason he, it's not that he can't get stronger, is that there's no one left in his universe to be a, that he's been able to encounter to push him far enough to go even further beyond. So he's plateaued. Saiyans though don't technically have that limit because of their biology. And now, granted, I think at one point Toriyama said that Zenkai's kind of stop after a while. But Super kind of contradicts that a point, so who's to say? Uh, but between their biology and just continuing and getting new transformations, God, how would I plateau Goku? Let's, let me put it this way. I won't think of a plateau. Let's just assume how this what if would go down. First off, we have to figure out where Goku, when Goku breaks his limiter. Let's, I would say it would have to be maybe King Kai. Kai, something about the Kai, something about his training breaks his limiter and all of his li all of his uh, limits are unlocked. So Goku doesn't have to transform anymore. He somehow accesses Ultra Instinct and Ego at the same time. It's perfectly bad. He can do all of this. And so the the long and short answer immediately is there's no being on the uh, in the Dragon Ball universe now, be it Beerus or the Omni King, I think, not joking on that, who would be able to touch Goku at all. That's that Goku would literally be the strongest individual in his entire multiverse on the Earth and out beyond. So when he shows up, he immediately just makes mincemeat of Nappa, just makes mincemeat of Vegeta. They they have to go to Namek. Goku joins them. He quickly makes work of Frieza and all the gang. They wish back. They wish back everyone. Um, the now the one thing you can say here though is. Goku getting the heart virus. Him getting the heart virus would, I think, still happen. Now, mind you, Trunks still shows up. Uh, and talks to Goku. Like, in my world, yeah, there's no cure for it. But or, sorry, your time, there's no cure for it. But in my world, there is. So, like, oh, I bet it's grape flavored. And so Goku forgets to take his mask, and he still outright just destroys nineteen. Like, out, I mean, literally destroys him. But the heart virus still starts taking effect, and he's out for a while. This, I think, is very key. Because if we go back to Namek real quick, what happens with Vegeta? Was he still unlock Super Saiyan, go back to Earth, all that? I think there's enough happening that he would end up getting Super Saiyan. And they go after Jiro, Goku's out of commission, until he wakes up. T then finds the androids and just kind of beats their asses, but ultimately says, no, oh, it's all right. No, that was kind of a fun fight. <laughs> uh, even though Goku can't be hurt at the moment, it's still fun to challenge these guys. Uh, and then Cell shows up and he would immediately take care of Cell. If the androids are stolen or taken or killed, he would help push them back. The sad truth for Goku here is the apathy thing. For There's no longer a challenge in the world. It's the same thing that go happens with Saitama, but for even worse with Goku, as someone who is very much battle-driven, who wants to seek and fight stronger opponents. With his limit are broken, there's no more hills to climb. There's no more mountains to climb. There's no more valleys to cross. There's no more, there's no more improvement. He truly has peaked. And so you go through the entirety of all Dragon Ball Z, He'd waste Boo. He'd wa Vegeta, no matter how strong Vegeta gets, he'd never be able to catch up to Goku. There'd be no old Kai waking up because he's just there. Beer's showing up. He would bitch smack Beerus around. <laughs> and say, all right, then. Well, in all my years, I've never had such a challenge. All right, you really got strong? Like, Very well, then, Sam. Let's go. Oh, oh, what? What? Oh, he turns it. Um, well, sorry, I thought, I'll show you my true power, saying, and, you know, they would clash, and Goku's just, boom. Now, let me bit, put it clear, it's at Super that we get to levels of power that Goku is kind of now doing the Saitama, like what oh, happened against Boris, where he actually now is priming to put in the effort. He actually has to put in at least a percentage of his power's effort, and the fact that he has to do that, he's actually saying, this is the first challenge I've had in years, and he's really excited, Pierce is having to go on, boom! Awesome! And what? 
is the Super Saiyan God. It's true. Say, <laughs> and so, uh, and you know, he shows up. He has Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego and all that. Somehow, some way, he has them. Uh, because we're doing Broke Limit or Goku right now. Screw the rules. I have money. Um, yeah, screw the rules. I have money. But no, seriously, like, screw the rules at this point. It's like, we can do whatever we want with Goku with a Broke Limiter. And so, ultimately, Beerus actually has to surrender. It's like, my word, you really are strong indeed, Goku. However, we says that ca a little cautiously, too. You might, you might, have, uh, you might need to uh, keep your wits about you, though. There are individuals who are afraid of strength. Speaking a little bit of the Omni King. And the Grand Priest keeping an eye. Like I said, though, this limiter broken? And how Saiyan's limitations just keep being shattered and there's technically no cap? Where his strength level lies is probably beyond anyone in this universe. And so, he... <laughs> even, like, the universe sticks turn him and it happens, Goku is like, cool! And then he just wastes everyone. Except when he gets nailed by Frost and it has to, you know, be... Uh, it has to be saved from disqualification by showing that Frost cheated. And then G Hit comes in and Goku's literally just hit. The time skip's impressive, but Goku's limiter is so broken. Like, ah, cool. Boom. There you go. The one, the one in the thing that would be up in the air, because Goku would completely annihilate the tournament of power. That's it. And I think there'd be an issue, there might be even an issue where the Grand Peace suggests that the Ana King, this individual, he's so powerful. Do you feel threatened by him, Lord Zeno? Um, not really. He's funny. So, Zeno, because if Zeno tries to take out Goku, it wouldn't work because his power is kind of superseding him. But the one arc, the one arc, where this could be a issue, the Goku Black arc, because the Super Dragon Balls can grant any wish regardless of power. Why you didn't wish to become the Omni King, Zamasu, I'm not sure. My best guess is Zamasu, uh, the Omni King might be exempt from the Dragon Balls. Like, trying to affect him with the Dragon Balls might not happen because of his level of power. It might be the one thing that supersedes Shenron. Although, uh, was it Salama, the guy who created the dra Super Dragon Balls? I still want us to be able to meet that guy someday. Because if you're someone who can make Dragon Balls so powerful they're the size of planets and can do anything... Well, then your level of power must be insane. <laughs> so, what? So, what is Goku exempt from the Super Dragon Balls? If we're going to go under the assumption that Goku's power is greater than the Omni King's, which is what I'm going with, and the that the Omni King might be exempt or immune or not immune, but that they can't target the Omni King because of just how powerful he is, then I would probably go under the belief system that Goku himself also can't be targeted. And so Zamasu tries to take, like, Vegeta's body instead. Uh, I think that makes sense. And he's doing Vegeta Black instead, and it just doesn't work out in his favor. And Goku just comes in and lays waste to all these guys. Grant the immortal guy he can't do much with, so they just bring him back and seal him. Really, if Goku broke his limiter, the entire series is broken because he can literally not defeat every threat. There is no threat. He's so strong, no one would be able to challenge him. The strongest individuals like uh, Beerus, Jiren, Broly, uh, even the Grand Priest would might be able to make him put some effort in, but not enough that he is at risk. So yeah, Goku with a broken limiter is kind of broken. It breaks the series. So that's why this honestly became a one-shot, because you're not dealing with a character who's now taking care of every threat. But this is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.